Yeah, we can, uh... Yeah, just go like this, one. Right? So... See, the thing is, this would still be like $800, $900 a month. But I'm gonna show you something that, where the Spanish people live. Um, it gets a little worse, the housing. I mean, I've been living in the Keys for the last eight years, and for the last seven years, I've been working with different marginalized populations. You know, I've always learned a lot from those who have less. It's hard to judge why someone doesn't have a job. You know, you don't know what they've been through. You don't know the emotional development. If you really observe what goes on, it's, it's, it's much more complicated than just saying everyone could have a job if they really wanted it. It's much more complicated. You know, when you come from a poor family in, in a poor community, it's harder for that person to come out and be successful. So if you were raised in a negative atmosphere from the age of zero, do you think that would affect your, your, your outlook on life? Do you? How hard it is? Yeah. How hard is it here? No work here, man. I mean, it's, it's, you see what I'm doing? I'm out picking up scrap, scrap metal to try to get through the day, you know? I'm trying to, like, I'm trying to get out of here, just like everybody else, really, just trying to get out of here. There's really nothing here, man. Right here, right next door. Four, five, it goes up to eight. Because it depends who's staying there, the, you know, the size of the property, the size of the trailer. It's expensive down here to live. I'm tired of this. It's so one trailer right on top of the other, you know? Mm -hmm. It's it's not good for me. It might be good for you. Or Patrick. <laughs> but not for me. Hi right, buddy, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. So this this place here is, is a transitional housing program for for men who are homeless. And they also have a um, a, pro a day program for, for men and women to come. They feed them, they can do their laundry. So uh, a lot of people who live in the mangroves come here in the daytime to get cleaned up. So then they live, they live back in here. There's a lot of garbage and stuff. But... See, a lot of people live in these mangroves and make homes. When I left Annapolis, Maryland, it was 18 degrees and sleet, sleet yeah. and rain. When I got here, it's like, all I need is a T-shirt and a pair of shorts, good to go. Don't have to worry about the cold. And there's plenty of seafood. Yeah. Luckily it's yeah. warm, so you can you can sleep outside. Yeah. Where yeah, can you go? Free, you, you gotta, gotta hide. You gotta Cops hide. find you, they they'll take you to jail for keeping the keeping it out. Yeah. There. You can even grow tomatoes in the winter. Yeah. Under the garden. So I, I really think there's a there's a problem in in the way we we uh, run our social service I industry. There's nothing that really uh, teaches that well. It's a, it, the, the social programs don't. I find they, they teach less and and give just just gives the services and it doesn't really work with um, developing skills for people. And it's really I think the skill development that's necessary. Um, it doesn't teach them about eating healthy. Uh, it doesn't teach them about local, the need for local agriculture. It doesn't teach them, um, you know, how to self-organize as a, as a community. Given an initiative about two years ago to uh, get basically more people on food stamps or have a bigger population on food stamps here in the Keys, and that's when I really started questioning why aren't we teaching more about growing food and, and healthy food than just getting people on food stamps. And that's when it took my social service side of me, you know, started to combine with the agricultural, back to the land, environmental um, desires that I had. So I started working with more environmental uh, groups, earth learning being one of them, and really starting learning about farming again. So really what I want to do is I want to combine the two, um, with my experience in social work uh, and social services, and, and, the, and the knowledge I'm gaining at um, in, in farming and in agriculture and in just pre-industrial uh, skills. Like transitions movement and, and local grassroots movements is the way it's going to happen. 
it's not going to come from the federal government. It's not going to come from you know the state government. It's really going to be done by communities self-organizing, you know, and 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 including. See, not just including like white middle class people, but including marginalized populations, including the poor, including uh, different races, including uh, people with uh, different. Uh, sexual orientation or you know but inclu being inclusive not just being one group within the community doing it